Hi, so after a relatively long period of my experimentation, I want to share some of my findings with you. And by that I mean constructing a prototype and running it. So here's my configuration, I'm using four bulbs. There are two pairs of bulbs in parallel and these two pairs are in series. So the output power is the same, but the density of power is distributed. I didn't really like that the bulbs were too bright. Anyway, so total power now is 400 watts. Now this material is not very good, in fact it's very bad, but it is the best that I have found. So if this doesn't work then I'm screwed. So to make this I used 3 parts of calcium carbonate, 2 parts of gypsum and 4 or 3.5 parts of water. You have to mix violently and then dump it into the form. Due to high filler and water content this will, well, set initially quite quickly and then you will need to release the water, excess water. So this will take some time in a hot oven or something like that. In addition to that I will have some other materials stacked up, but this gypsum will be my primary temperature dropper. Now I'm installing some temperature probes. I am interested basically in the temperature on the bottom, in the center. I will have one more probe in the cavity so we will know what the temperature inside is, approximately. Now to explain better this stack, so I have 10mm thick gypsum piece on the bottom. Underneath that there is 2mm of wood and underneath that is 2mm thick piece of polystyrene. On top of this stack I will place quartz glass plate. You can get this from about any ceramic hot plate. Now I'm going to install the probe in the cavity. My target here is about 400 degrees Celsius. You will see temperature on the bottom on the left side and temperature in the cavity on the right side. I will be boiling 200 milliliters of cold water to get the idea what the output is. I would be happy if this boiled under 5 minutes, but I guess I already would rather like to move on in this project. Well, 7 minutes. I can live with that. Anyway, so the temperature on the bottom is already about 120 degrees, so my polystyrene is probably molten. And I will let you enjoy this pretty picture before my room will be filled with very very pleasant smoke. Okay, so my secondary and tertiary insulation is already toast. That polystyrene can reflect a lot of heat, but you cannot exceed its maximum temperature, so... Okay, so here is this gypsum thing after burn. I mean it looks like what you would expect, it will crack and it will disintegrate slowly over time. Perhaps this can be improved by adding some glass fiber or something like that, but then it wouldn't really be that simple. Now this is the second layer, you can see that this is not a wood but thermal properties will likely be very similar. And this thing looks like it was exposed to about 300 degrees celsius, so not really that good. About 100 lower and we could probably make it. And this is the polystyrene piece and after the reflective layer was stripped off. I think I would like to replace wood with something else but I don't know really with what. This polystyrene is pretty good and I don't think I will find anything better. Now during assembly of this heater I managed to crack it. This is why it is held together with zip tie. I mean this material is really delicate even if it's not damaged by the heat so... But it does have about the same performance as the commercial stuff I have tested, so I really doubt that I will find anything better than this. Structurally, perhaps, but thermally, I, I really don't think so. You can see that this thing quite still holds together, somehow, but I could imagine that over time these cracks would progressively get much worse, and eventually this thing perhaps would turn into powder. But for the short periods of time this doesn't really look bad. My other idea was to replace calcium carbonate with calcium hydroxide and let it cure in the air to become calcium carbonate and hopefully that way you can grow some crystals that could be basically interleaved so it will have better structure but then who knows what the thermal properties would be like so yeah I mean don't know especially reaction of calcium hydroxide with air is quite slow so I think I wouldn't be happy with that. 
Now, if you are interested, I will leave you with some notes that I have gathered over the time, and I will add some commentary to that. Especially this file might be quite cryptic for strangers, so... So I started experimenting with aluminum oxide and sodium silicate. I was basically looking for influence of amount of sodium silicate that I will use on the thermal conductivity of the brick that I will produce. And it seems that the more sodium silicate you use, the higher the thermal conductivity will be. And the same thing will go for the pressure if you need to press powder together to form it into shape. Incidentally, the less sodium silicate and pressure you will use, your result will be more crumbly. I repeated my result with calcium silicate because it looked like very good material, but for some reason it does not really like to play with sodium silicate. It looks like there is some chemical reaction going on. Perhaps calcium reacting with carbon dioxide, but this shouldn't really happen because... Well, I guess it could. Hmm. Well, anyway, doesn't work, that's my point. Then I tried to measure conductivity of a powder. I mean, all were pretty good, but titanium dioxide was absolutely awesome, but it's powder, so... But this is just more data that suggests that the binding is the thing that will cause thermal conductivity to go up. Then I changed the then I changed my setup a little bit, so I remeasured few things. Oh yes, and then I had an idea. Do you know about aircrete? It's basically a concrete, but it's foamed. I've seen some people making contraption to make foam with concrete. Basically, I don't really know how it works. I don't really got into it too much. I was thinking, what if I add polystyrene balls to my mix, cure it, and then use heat to evaporate polystyrene. So here you can see what it looks like. This is gypsum, so obviously it has cracked, so... So yeah, my point is that it can be done, but it unfortunately doesn't work for me. Then I tested blackboard chalk. I bought it as a, quote, fuel for my CO2 generator, but it didn't work, because it was gypsum based, probably. Hence my idea of using calcium carbonate mixed with gypsum. I mean, really, this chalk was the best thing I have ever tested here. Really impressive. Then I did some more tests with gypsum. The numbers with G is gypsum. For example, 40 G is 40 grams of gypsum. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I have to run some more tests with this gypsum recipe, but even from a mechanical perspective, it is not the thing that I'm looking for, really. But I have decided to share this anyway. Even though I like when I can do things from scratch, but I think that I have to... I think that I have to do some more tests with commercial isolations and see what can be done. So yeah, that's enough rant for today, and see you next time.